Our next motivating example is population growth. Uh, planning for population growth is an important part of city planning. Uh, you need to figure out how many social workers you need to be hiring per year and how many firefighters you need to be hiring per year, all kinds of important stuff. So I've got a data set here on the Houston population every 10 years. Uh, it's kind of an old data set. It only goes up to 1980, but that's okay. And I've graphed the data set here. And we might ask, uh, here's 1970. What was the population growth rate from 1970 to 1980? So that's our first question. What was the average rate of change in population from 1970 to 1980? And I've got a um, uh, uh, set over here, uh, a sketch of it. So let's say this was uh, like 1970 and this was 1980. We want to know the average rate of growth from this point to that point. Well, you might remember that you can think of average rate of growth, average rate of change as kind of a slope. And you probably remember the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that's the slope of the line that connects x1, y1 to x2, y2. Um, so that will give us, that, what units will that be in? That'll be in uh, people on the top, because y is in people, and the bottom is years, so people per year. So that's our average rate of change. So I could go ahead and uh, compute that here. I could say equals, and then I'm going to divide, um, the population, uh, take this difference and divide by that difference. And I'm going to do it wrong at first in a way that's really common, because it's really important to think about this. So I'm going to say equals y2, uh, the 1980 population minus the 1970 population, divided by the time 1980, let's do that one, minus 1970. And I get an answer that seems kind of reasonable. Let's, uh, oh, if you ever get uh, all hashtags in Excel, that just means that the column isn't wide enough to show the number that it's trying to show. And you can come up to the, uh, to the separator between the two columns, click and drag it farther over, and then it'll show you. The number's still there, you can still do calculations with it. But this is saying that Houston was growing at 2.9 million people a year from 1970 to 1980. Uh, Houston only had 2.9 million people in 1980, so growing by 2.9 million people a year seems a little outrageous. Uh, let's go back and think about this formula. What will Excel do when we calculate this formula? Think about order of operations. Yeah, it'll do the division first and then the subtraction on either side. So we need to tell it to do the subtraction in the numerator first and then do the subtraction in the denominator, and then it'll do the division after we do both of those. So growing by 90,000 people a year sounds more reasonable when your population is only 2.9 million. So that number, that average rate of change, that slope in people per year, let's say this is people per year, um, uh, between 1970 1980. That's called a difference quotient because it was difference of the y's divided by difference of the x's. So we're going to be talking about difference quotients a lot. It's good to get in the habit of talking about them. Um, so here's our next question. That was the average rate of change from 1970 to 1980. If I wanted to put that down here, should I put that on the row from 1970 or the row from 1980? In some sense, it should go kind of between those two rows because it's using data from both of them, but you can't put a number in between two rows in Excel. So let's think about, um, should I put it here or here? Well, if I put it here, that's kind of looking forward from 1970 to 1980. That's not a bad idea. So. I'll do population in, in kind of forward one row minus the current population divided by 
the population, the year forward one row minus the current year, and we get the same number. Um, and now I could have actually done that on the year on the row before, etc. Right, so I can uh, fill that up. I can grab this fill handle and drag it up, and I get decade by decade what was the growth rate from this decade to the next decade. And that is, since we're looking forward in time from this row to the next row, that's called the forward difference quotient, which we'll often abbreviate FDQ, and its units are people per year. All right, uh, let's make that not so bold. Um, so that's the forward difference quotient, and we got that by saying, let's look forward one row. You might imagine, well, if I had put it here, I'd be looking backward one row. So we'll try that over here. This value minus that value divided by the x value minus the previous row's x value. And then I can fill that up. But up here, it gives me trouble because it's trying to use words in the calculation. So that cell just doesn't mean anything. I'll just delete it. I don't want to put a zero because we don't know that it was zero. We just don't know what it was because we don't have data from 1840. So this is the backward difference quotient. Um, and that's also people per year. All right. Um, so we've got the forward difference quotient and the backward difference quotient. Now what if I ask the question, what was the rate of growth in 1970, right at 1970, not going a whole 10 years into the future to 1980, not going, that, that, that would be this number, not going 10 years into the past to 1960, that would be this number. Is there a way I can get the uh, rate of change in 1970 itself without having to think all, a whole decade in the future? Well, if we look at the um, formula we wrote here, uh, that was this slope here. If I look at that slope, that would be like 1970 to 1980, 1960 to 1970. So this was, from, from the x2 point of view, this was the backward difference quotient. Over here, this slope would be uh, y3 minus y2 over x3 minus x2. And from the x2 point of view, if we do that here, y, y3 minus y2 over x3 minus x2. From the x2 point of view, this is the forward difference quotient. Is there anything I can do with those two numbers to give me something like the slope here? I think that slope should be kind of in between the slower slope and this faster slope. Well, you might say let's just average those. So if I average the forward difference quotient and the backward difference quotient, that's something that you could call the central difference quotient. And that's often a really good idea. The central difference quotient tends to be more accurate than either the backward or the forward difference quotient. Uh, you could abbreviate that CDQ, of course. Another way to think of it is, can I just take the rate of change from x1 all the way to x3. Like imagine drawing a line all the way up there. That would actually be pretty much parallel to this line. So I could do that as y3 minus y1 over x3 minus x1. And that's also called the central difference quotient. And it turns out that if x1, x2, and x3 are equally spaced, these two are the same. If they're not equally spaced, these two are different, and it gets really complicated. We're not going to worry about that. Either way, I'd say you could call it the central difference quotient. So how can I do that in Excel? We've got 
forward difference, backward difference, um, and we'll have the central difference quotient. And if we have both a backward and a forward, we can take the average of those two and fill that down. It's not clear what I should do on this row. Take the average of something with a blank. That's the average of just one thing. You kind of don't have a central difference quotient if you're already in the last row of your data set because you can't go forward one year. And the same thing uh, in that if you're in the first year of your data set. So that's the central difference quotient. And then our next question will be, uh, what's the what will the growth rate be in 25 years? Can we do forward or central or backward um, for data that's 25 years past the end of our table? That's something we're really going to have to think about, so that requires its own new video.